Hello, and welcome to today's discussion and demo, Private Clouds and SD-WAN in a SNAP. Today we are going to talk about how to simplify your hybrid cloud environment. We'll go into some of the challenges of connecting your hybrid cloud and how to make that easier. Then we'll do a real-time demonstration showing you exactly how simple it can be to connect your cloud environments. Finally, we'll wrap up with a Q&A. My name is Teresa Abamondi, Product Marketing Director here at Cato Networks. And joining me today is Sean McCarthy, Director of Sales Engineers in the Americas here at Cato. So let's get started. Moving to the cloud has obvious benefits, which is why you've likely already done it or are now considering it. Among those benefits are cost savings, which can come from moving from a CapEx to an OpEx investment, as well as eliminating the need for you to expand your data center footprint, which can all result in real savings, freeing up budget for more critical investments. Scalability. Moving to the cloud allows you to optimize capacity and use, licensing what you need, when. By considerably reducing the lead time required to expand your footprint, cloud data centers allow you to be more dynamic in scaling your infrastructure. Accessibility. Because cloud resources are available everywhere, collaboration and accessibility are greatly increased. Agility. That same accessibility helps increase agility, which is critical to today's enterprises. For instance, disaster recovery issues become much easier to address with cloud resources. And finally, management. Because cloud resources are managed for you, moving to the cloud reduces your IT overhead. Your team is no longer responsible for patching or upgrades, freeing those resources up to focus on other projects. But the cloud isn't without its issues. Consider connectivity. You may choose to invest in high quality private links to ensure a quality experience for your end users. It's expensive, but it's worth it for the guaranteed performance. But not everyone in your organization will get that quality experience. Backhauling traffic from your remote branches will negatively impact the experience for users there. You can solve the backhauling problem with direct internet access from branch locations, but as you know, going over the internet can result in unpredictable performance, often making critical applications unusable. And having internet connections at branch offices opens up security risks, creating additional challenges. So when you're confronting the connectivity challenge, the choice isn't between high quality or low cost. Traditional choices will actually offer you neither option. But connectivity quality isn't the only challenge enterprises face when connecting to the cloud. You'll also have to solve for access control, which can involve having multiple virtual private cloud instances, especially if role-based access control is required. Connecting all of those VPCs within a region comes with additional challenges. Further driving that complexity is often a requirement to create a fully mesh network, connecting all of your VPC instances from one region to another, and then back to each of your physical locations. Take this simple AWS instance, for example. Now connect that to your primary data center. Add additional data centers and remote locations. And the result is a complex intertwined mess. So much for the ease and simplicity of moving to the cloud. So if traditional cloud deployments are complex and have unpredictable connectivity, what would a good solution have to look like? Well, it should be simple. It shouldn't require a complex mesh of connections between multiple cloud instances and multiple physical locations. And it should be secure. Cloud security should be consistent with the rest of the enterprise network, including role-based access control. It should be everywhere. Users should be able to connect just as quickly and have the same user experience, whether connecting from the US or China. Finally, that same user experience should be available for everyone, whether you're a mobile user or connecting from headquarters. And that's exactly what Cato's solution does. Let's take a closer look at the Cato Cloud. At the core, we built a global private backbone of POPs running our converged software stack. The POPs are interconnected with redundant tier one providers that commit to SLAs around long haul latency, jitter, and packet loss. The POP software selects the best route across providers, 
for maximum uptime and best end-to-end -end performance. This design offers an immediate improvement in network quality over the unpredictable public internet links and a significant cost reduction over MPLS. The POP software delivers our network optimization and security capabilities. For the network, it calculates the best routes globally for every packet over the best performing provider. This also creates high resiliency in case of a provider degradation or outage. It accelerates WAN traffic by maximizing bandwidth for activities such as file downloads and voice calls. And it optimizes cloud access by routing application-specific traffic to the POP closest to the cloud destination. For security, all traffic, including encrypted traffic, is inspected by multiple security engines. These include a next-generation firewall with application awareness, secure web gateway with URL filtering, and advanced threat prevention with next-gen anti-malware and IPS. Security policies apply to all resources, including physical locations, cloud resources, and mobile users. Customers connect all network resources, we call them edges, to the backbone using secure tunnels. Physical locations connect via Cato Socket SD-WAN devices. The Cato Socket manages multiple last mile connections in active-active mode. It moves traffic to the best path based on underlying link behavior. The Socket also applies quality of service prioritization based on application and user awareness. And it protects critical apps like voice against packet loss. Cato Sockets also support site-to-site -site MPLS and internet connections for regional use case and for bandwidth intensive applications with low security exposure, like backup. Customers that don't care for Edge SD-WAN capabilities can establish IPSec tunnels from existing routers or firewalls to the nearest POP and get the benefits of the backbone with a zero on-site footprint. Cato provides a broad set of policies out of the box that optimize traffic for the most common requirements with the ability to configure highly granular policies for specific needs. Combining Cato's Edge SD-WAN capabilities for last mile optimizations with Cato's backbone middle mile optimizations allows customers to augment or replace MPLS. Beyond physical locations, Cato connects cloud resources and mobile users to the network. A mobile user can use the Cato client or a browser to securely connect to any WAN or cloud application from a laptop, tablet, or smartphone. The users dynamically connect to the nearest POP as they move from place to place. Traffic is then optimized and secured over the backbone and to the destination. Cloud data centers are connected by establishing an IPsec tunnel from the Cato cloud. This is an agentless connection that requires no appliance to be installed in the cloud data center. Finally, Cato offers a flexible management model. The self-service console is available for customers to configure all networking and security policies for their entire system. Cato and its partners can deliver a fully managed service for its customers who want it. The Cato Cloud is a network for the digital business. It enables IT to easily support the business with an optimized and secure network. As needed, Cato can be gradually deployed across use cases while coexisting with your network and security infrastructure. As you can see, Cato Cloud can drastically simplify how you connect to your cloud environments. And in just a moment, Sean is going to demonstrate exactly how easy it is to do that. Thanks, Teresa. Hey, everyone. I'm going to show you how to connect an Azure site today in the Cato interface and how quick it is to do just that. And uh, it's just a few steps here. So first of all, I'm going to quickly uh, jump into my site configuration inside the CC2 admin interface here. And I'm going to simply add a new site, just like a regular Cato site you've probably done a couple times by now. I'm going to just call this site Azure. It's going to be in the US. I will make it a cloud data center type. That's fairly obvious. Connection type we're going to use today is going to be Ike v2. We're going to use IPsec. That's the fastest, quickest, simplest way to get Azure, AWS, Google Cloud all connected to Cato Network. This is in the US, obviously. And we're going to be in the US East region today, which I you know is in Virginia. New York time zone. And when Cato asks for this native range, 
what I want to put here is one of my, my Azure settings. So there are a few things in Azure that are required to set this up. We're not going to cover those today. They're out of the scope. But one of them is uh, a couple of Azure subnets. So you must have an Azure VNet and inside the VNet at least two subnets, one of which should be a gateway type of subnet. And that's what I'm going to put here is the gateway subnet of my Azure network. Just like that. I'm going to save that config and I'm going to modify a few things here of that site configuration while we do this. First of all, I am going to double check this was the correct setting. Excellent. And now I'm going to set up my IP set configuration. So what I've got to do here is tell it how to connect to Cato. So I need a few things. I need the Cato side, which is our POP IP that will be set up on the Azure side as a, as a customer side VPN gateway. And then I'm gonna add the Azure VPN gateway. And this you would have already set up in Azure. It's the VPN gateway endpoint and it has a public IP. I'll set my bandwidth and I'll set my private IPs. This is optional. I am going to run dynamic routing. It's the quickest, simplest way to share routes between my networks. And so because of this, I need to share private IPs to have a BGP peer on both sides. So what I'm gonna do here is inside your Azure portal, uh, your VPN gateway is assigned an IP address inside that gateway subnet. So you can find that and put that here. And on the Cato side, you actually get to pick yours and I've chosen this IP for the inside of the tunnel IP on the Cato end. Very simple there. And I'll set my primary pre-shared key. All right, I have to do a few more things here. I'm gonna double check my parameters, which is going to be 256. I'm gonna use SHA-1 for both and group two. Fairly common Azure setup. Again, you can find all this in the documentation and we also will have a guide out shortly walking you through this and that's it. So I've set up my IP endpoints. I've set up my, my inside IP addresses here. I've set up my pre-shared key and my parameters. I'm gonna save this and that will save the site config. I'm gonna do one last thing, which is set up BGP peering using these IPs. So down here in the BGP section, I simply add a peer. This is going to be Azure. And I've already set up a um, ASN for this. The neighbor IP is that same IP we put earlier. It's the gateway address of the Azure side of things. And I'm gonna advertise the default route to Cato, and I'm gonna accept any routes it sends me. And that's it. That's the entire config from beginning to end on the Cato side. Obviously there are some things on the Azure side you need to have. And so we'll release a document later on that can walk you through both sides of this. And obviously our engineers can do the same with you in real time. So I'll go back to my main page here. I'll simply confirm the site is up which it is, there we go, Connected to the Cato Pop, and we're good. So I'll hand it back to Teresa, thank you. Thank you, Sean. That certainly illustrated how simple it is to configure. And I see that we have some great questions here, so let's go ahead and get started with those. Here's our first question, this is coming from Sarah. Sarah's question is, what can I expect for connectivity speeds through Cato Cloud? That's a great question. Sean, can you answer that for Sarah? I can take this one. Um, and actually, I can also show you rather than just tell you. So let me set up this demo for you. Um, first of all, the answer is that you should expect the maximum throughput that your link provides. Uh, what Cato is doing is making sure the path is optimized, uh, free of congestion, free of packet loss, so that you can get the absolute best performance from your network you can possibly get. And so what I got here is I was showing earlier a customer uh, a speed comparison over Cato versus over just regular, uh, we'll call it clean pipe. It's good, it's not lossy, but there's no, no way up in there whatsoever. So on top is that clean, no loss, but no way up connection. And on bottom is the Cato connection. 
and these are going from the US to Australia. Okay, you can see the ping times actually are a bit quicker up top, the non-Cato connection, by about five, anywhere from five to 15 milliseconds quicker ping time. So I'll start the test and using a, a well-known tool called land speed test here. That's very simple. It does a kind of a random read right across the WAN using SMB. And it first does the upload and then does the download. So I'll test the, the non-Cato right now, doing the right still. Okay, the right's done. So about three megs up. Again, we're going a, a pretty long distance here. So distance always affects speed. The key is how much and how much Cato can overcome that. And the download's almost finished here. So three and five. All right, now we'll move to the Cato test and we'll test the exact same distance over Cato. So we'll complete the upload test first. And you can see already going a bit quicker just by feel. And that's going to finish up here. That's at nine. And the download test, much quicker, that's at 47. So again, this is a live demo. This is two of the same servers, just using a different path in between and there's a pretty obvious speed difference with Cato in the middle. So I'll hand it back to you, Teresa, thanks. Thanks for that, Sean. And now I've got another question from Matt. Matt's asking, how do you position your solution compared with Direct Connect and Express Route? Well, Matt, with Cato, there's no need for either because Cato is co-located in the same data centers as AWS and Azure. So your traffic egresses Cato's network right where you need to be, giving you the same performance of a Direct Connect or Express Route, without the cost of those dedicated connections. Our next question here is from Rich. Rich wants to know if Cato offers any management services. Rich, that's a great question. We get asked about that all the time. In fact, Cato offers a number of managed services to assist with everything from rapid site deployment to threat detection to day-to-day -day management. You can layer in one or all of our services depending on what you need. And the best part is that you always have the ability to make changes on your own. So you get to, to decide what works best for you. It looks like we're running out of time. I'd like to thank everyone again for joining us today. And of course, thank you, Sean. If you'd like to learn more about how Cato can simplify your cloud integration, please check out our website at catonetworks.com forward slash Cato cloud. We look forward to hearing from you.